<laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, Jordan, your Master of Lore and Storyteller Extraordinaire. We're going to be taking a break from our running series right now on putting together better plots, adventures, and the like. And we're going to be doing something that I've kind of been thinking about for a little bit here. And that is, I've come up with a list of the top seven things to never do at game night. Now, I should warn you, this does have a little bit of a disclaimer to it. The Most of this top seven here are things that I feel are particularly disruptive to a certain extent. The only one that's really set in stone for me is the number one spot, which we will get to in a moment here. Uh, take this at face value with a grain of salt and take it for what it is. Just, uh, just a quick list of some things that I think should be adhered to when it comes to any game night, no matter what the session or what game you may be playing. All right then, let's get started, shall we? That's right, starting us off at number seven today is min-maxing or being a munchkin. Now, for those of you that are new here, uh, being a min-maxer or making a munchkin character essentially means that you've taken the character's race, stats, uh, templates to create some modifiers or have modifiers thrown in, stacking with feats, gear, and other particular effects that are uh, included in the game mechanics in order to emphasize a character's particular strengths uh, to make them overpowered essentially just going through everything and doing so with a disregard for story and that's the big thing right there for me the number one thing is always going to be story story is king now this isn't to say that you shouldn't make an effective character just more that when it comes to making these characters make them an actual character don't just min max and just look at it as a pure numbers game build an actual good character and good dms and storytellers will probably do a good job about balancing this out a little bit and uh get, helping you give a little bit more thought to your character and with that said good players are probably going to be more inclined to make characters that are a mix of effective within the game mechanics and interesting story-wise. Uh, you can make an all-powerful badass character, but the idea is to build up that character over time. Go ahead and take some skills and feats that are just more interesting rather than something that really just builds into something that's just god-awful badass and effective right off the bat. And with that said, next up we have... That's right, here at the number six spot, we have showing up to game night with a third party made character class or picking a non standard race without asking. Now, it's not to say that every single third party class or non standard race uh, should be disallowed from game nights. All, the, all I'm saying with this here is that you should check with your DM or storyteller first. Now, this particular point, this more pertains to. Uh, games and systems that rely on uh, classes for the game mechanics and particular functions of a character. Games like Shadowrun, where it's more dependent on how you allocate points for your stats and skills, uh, those might be a bit more exempt from this one. But the point is, with this one here at number six, uh, this just refers to the fact that there may be balance problems when it comes to particular classes, or they may clash with particular themes. Uh, I know many times running a more high fantasy type of setting, I would have a couple of players that would want to play with somebody that had access to a wide range of firearms and not just muzzle loaders or uh, or single shot weapons. He, they wanted to have full on automatic weapons, long range anti tank uh, rifles and the like. And it just kind of clashes with the system a little bit there. And that said, also going back to the uh, non standard races. Um, with that, the particular problem comes to be in that a lot of uh, the unique races like say half dragons half fiends half celestials in the D, D and pathfinder settings they tend to come with a suite of abilities as well as stat uh, stat bonuses and can really throw things out of whack overall P particularly if the dm doesn't have everything scaled properly to uh, compensate for this especially if the other players have gone with more standard races they'll find that uh, the 
the person that showed up with the non-standard race or character class may outshine them in particular ways, or the, the exact opposite can happen, where the player finds that, oh, crap, this, this character class doesn't work at all. I can't, I can barely do anything. So all the way around, it's better to check in first. That way, when you come to game night, you can avoid having that, ah, oh, crap moment when the game has to be stopped or it starts later because we have to stop and re-roll your character. Or worse yet, in some of the more dramatic cases where a player just packs up and goes home. That's always unfortunate. So always, always, always check in first. Now that said, DMs, storytellers, this is not meant to encourage you to prevent players from making creative or unique choices. This is not to say you should disabuse people of the notions that they can pick or select something that's outside of the standard range of books. This is just to say, talk to each other and communicate and make sure everything's above board before play starts. That way everybody can just jump right in and get to enjoying the game and the story. Now, this one was a tricky one to place right here because it could easily rank higher and it just depends on to the extent that it happens, and that is metagaming. What is metagaming, some of you newbies may ask? Metagaming is when a player has their character act with knowledge that the character would not have. Now, for example, say if a player across the table is having a private meeting one-on-one -on -one with an NPC uh, in an inn across town, and player two decides, well, based on that information, I'm going to take this action, action X, Y, and Z all the way through. Uh, that really shouldn't be allowed. The, the characters typically have no way of knowing what's happening there, unless there's some form of communication that's passing between the two. Um, if there's no communication somehow happening between the two, then the character should not be acting with knowledge based off of what's happening across town there. Now, a lot of it will depend on the how this plays out, will depend on the setting and the DM's adjudication overall, but ideally, players, you should be acting with what your character knows. You know, make knowledge checks, make skill checks, uh, see what your character, what information your character has access to and knows right off the top of their head or bears witness to. But, you know, if it's something your character wouldn't reasonably know, uh, you shouldn't act on it. Another good example of this is, uh, say you're running through, uh, running through a particular location and come upon an encounter and your character, you go, oh, I know what that is. That's a red dragon. It's immune to fire attacks. We shouldn't use fire. We should use ice. It's like, ah, you got to roll first. You got to roll a knowledge check first to see if your character knows what type of dragon this is and what its strengths and weaknesses are. It's not something that's necessarily innate to everybody right off the top of their heads, unless there's a story reason involved as to why the character would know. And always remember, number one, aside from having fun, story is king. Coming in at number three here for me is distracting other players. Whether it's phone use, players are just sitting there doodling or coloring or on their computer or dev whatever device and they start distracting themselves and pulling away from the story and worse yet, just distracting other players with their own little shenanigans, that gets to be a bit of a problem. Usually it's an indicator that they're bored or they're not getting quite enough playtime, but sometimes you just get a player that's just not invested in it or has other things that are going on. Uh, players, I, if you do have other things that are a little bit more important going on, you know, uh, talk to your DM, uh, talk to the group, you know, let them know, hey, maybe, maybe uh, I need to sit this one out because I've got these other things going on that are pretty important. Or, you know, if you can talk to your DM and store or storyteller, uh, talk with them and establish, hey, at this point, I got to have this done. I need to bow out for a little bit or I need to duck out early. Uh, whatever the case may be, just work it out with everybody ahead of time just so that way you don't end up pulling down the rest of the group and causing gameplay to come to a grinding halt. The It always just absolutely sucks when you get to this person's turn and you go, hey, it's your turn. Huh? What? What's happening? 
Where are we at? What's going on? And then you got to take five minutes or so to bring them up to speed really quick to make sure that they understand what's going on. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer than that, depending on what's happening, and especially if it's a combat encounter. Ideally, players, you should be paying attention, especially to relevant story points or these combat encounters, so that way you can keep the pace of the gameplay going and make your way through the story faster. Now this is one that applies equally to players and storytellers. Just too many players at the table. Ideally, most tabletop games, whether it's Shadowrun with all its D6 uh, dice pool rolling or World of Darkness like uh, a Vampire the Masquerade uh, or even Pathfinder, ideally you want to top out at four, maybe five players. Five is the most you really want to do with any of these tabletop RPGs. Six can be doable, but the more people you get, the more you got to be aware of everybody's playtime, and the more everybody's got to be paying attention. The less time you have to spend bringing people up to speed, the faster the game's going to go, and the faster everybody can have a turn. In my experience, though, cut it off at five. Six, six just usually gets to be a bit much, a bit too much of a hassle, really. I mean, again, it's doable, but everybody's got to be paying attention. And that's one of the unfortunate things with this kind of a game. It's, uh, you want to bring in your friends, you want everybody to come in and have a good time, but at a certain point, you just got to cut it off. Otherwise, it's just way too much, and it sucks having to tell a friend no, and just tell, you know, there's nothing... There's nothing against them, there's no hard feelings, and it's not that you don't want them there, it's just four or five players is really about where you want to have it at. Again, six is doable, but everybody's got to be on the same page. Um, there are some gamer groups out there uh, where they have more than six, uh, seven, or even sometimes up to eight players I've seen, and it goes along pretty seamlessly and smoothly, but again, it's a more of an exception than the rule. All the players are typically on point, paying attention, and moving the story right along. Uh, they don't have a lot of other little side things happening that slow it down like, uh, like your typical day-to-day -day groups can have happen. And coming up next here is my number one. This one is absolutely always my number one. Uh, pet peeve, this particular thing that just drives me nuts more than anything else and should never, ever be done at game night. And that is... Yes, you heard it here. Rules lawyering. Being a rules lawyer just absolutely sucks. Again, for those of you that don't know, a rules lawyer is the type of person who stops the game to look up a particular rule through the books and just drags everybody down, yanks everybody out of the moment, it breaks immersion, and it just slows things down, especially if it's kind of an esoteric rule or something. You don't remember which book it's in. I, I've got a lot of Pathfinder books, and if I stopped every time I couldn't remember a rule to look through here, it'd just take way too long and slow things down and you know all of us you know when we're adults you got a limited amount of time with which to be gaming so and whether you're a player or a dm don't stop the game to rules lawyer if if you're a player and you think something's not quite right with a ruling that the dm makes because they couldn't remember something off the top of their head wait to bring it up afterwards to say hey you know i mean uh, we made, I know you made a call just to keep the game moving and appreciate the game moving forward, but I'd like to know what that rule is so next time around we know what the right answer is going to be. Uh, same thing for you D uh, UDMs and storytellers out there. You don't remember a rule right off the top of your head for how something's supposed to work or how it's supposed to go? Don't waste time looking through the books. Just make your use your best judgment, make the best call possible, and bear in mind from... Uh, episode one for being a better DM, you're not always going to remember things and not all the rule, not all the rules are going to perfectly encapsulate everything that happens in your game. So you may be having to make a call regardless. Sometimes your players may want to argue with you on that, but 
you know, that's a moment to lay down the law a little bit and be firm with them and just say, hey, I just want to keep the game moving forwards. Let's just table this for now and we'll talk about it later to try to make it make it better so that you're, uh, we can keep everybody happy at game time. This is also one of those things that some munchkins have a bad habit of doing uh, is uh, nitpicking at all these weird little rules and different esoteric things that can come up with uh, different character templates that they can take to stack onto their character when they're not paying attention to story. They will typically argue and try to fight for this because, oh, it's, it's in this book. I got it out of this book. I can I should be able to use it. It's like, no, 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 no. That does not mean you get to automatically use it just because you found it in one of the official books. It's one of those things like like with anything else, you gotta check with the storyteller first and make sure it's all it's all good, it's all above board. Another thing that kind of falls into this is uh, people who will ask a particular question and then arguing with the answer that they get. That also falls under this general umbrella of rules lawyering. If you ask a question for a particular thing, whether it's a rule or uh, a class function or some kind of spell or ability, you know, just go with the answer. If you're not happy with it, you know, bring it up later. Unless the DM is absolutely being a total dick, you don't need to uh, spend five or ten minutes arguing everything out. And even if the DM is being a jerk, you know, most of these things can typically wait till afterwards. Uh, chan and chances are, in that instance, if the DM's being a jerk to you, probably kind of trying to spank the crap out of the rest of the team, too. But that's a whole nother issue for another day. Uh, with that said, this was my top seven list of things to never do at game night. Uh, let me know what you think. And if you do you have some ideas on things that could be added to this list, comment down in the comment section below. Uh, if you like the video, please give me a like and subscribe and hit that like bu button. And if you like that video today, please hit like and subscribe. Can always use more subscribers and views on my channel here. Um, also, make sure you hit that bell icon so that way you get notifications when I have more content uploaded here down at the Gamer's Den. Thank you all very much for your time today. You have yourselves a lovely day. I have been Jordan, your resident, resident master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Have a good night.